Well, as you may have noticed, we're back inside the house, and there's a real good reason for it. It got really hot outside. It's 103 degrees. And we decided it was time to come in and change your clothes, get a shower, have a bite to eat for lunch, and then sit down and finish this video off so that you know what's going on. We've been tracking and missing, <laughs> to some extent, uh, the source of plant loss for the last three years. First thing, first thing we lost was potatoes. We lost potatoes and we lost all of the potatoes. Right. But we're pretty sure that was from wireworms. Right, we that actually, was wireworms. We actually saw some wireworms, so when we figured out that wireworms were eating potatoes, we knew what that was and, and we have some ways of dealing with that. Right, uh, the big problem is that a lot of these pests really, I mean even agriculturally, if you're willing to throw terrible, awful insecticides and stuff like that at, uh, at them, some of these don't have really good ways of getting the critters because they're underground and anything that would be sturdy enough to get all the way you know six inches underground we got to practically nuke the place um so that wasn't on the list i mean i actually have an ancient um department of <laughs> agriculture brochures that just it'll put the hair up on the back of your neck it's awesome uh i got it from the a county extension agent in New Mexico in like the 1970s or something. Oh my gosh, the things that, that most of the stuff's not even legal to use anymore. Their advice works really well. Right. But it has some really unfortunate side. We figured out, we thought, what the entire problem was. We blamed the entire thing on wireworms. In retrospect, I believe what we were seeing was wireworm damage and white grub damage. The problem with white grubs is when they're done doing some of their damage, a lot of times they go deeper in the soil and then they form a cocoon and sit down there until they're ready to come back up as June bugs or, or uh, Japanese, Japanese beetles. beetles. In our case, they're mostly June bugs. And I think what was happening even back then is we were starting to get some June bugs. Now it wasn't a huge problem last year because the rest of our plants were really not being affected that much. We were seeing end of summer die off from uh, some, to some small extent in the um, beans. But, you know, if you've been sitting around outside in um, 103 degrees for months, uh, you might croak too, uh, no matter how much you want. And you know, these plants all have a, a life expectancy. They get ratty towards the end of their life expectancy. There was probably some damage, but generally speaking, when I was ripping out those plants, they still had good root systems. So that tells me that some of the problems may have been other things. Uh, it could have been some sort of wilt or virus or bacteria or something like that that was adding to it. So this year we determined that we were going to try and eliminate the most common things like bean mosaic virus by choosing to plant cultivars that were more resistant. Now there's no such thing as bulletproof in these things. And we had a horrible bean beetle infestation and cucumber beetle infestation this year. It was just miserable. I'm sure you've heard us say before that every kind of pest on the planet that we ever see here all arrived, not in just, you know, small numbers, but in thousands and tens of thousands this year. It was just ridiculous. And our theory is that we had a bizarre winter last year that was just we had rain when we should have had snow. It was almost always too warm. We had caterpillars coming out all winter, which means we saw no butterflies at the beginning of the spring. It took until really now to get butterflies. So there was this weird um, thing during the winter that screwed up a lot of different bugs. And normally we clear out all the brush and, and leaves and stuff that are left behind. Uh, they're all burned because they're usually full of bugs and bug eggs. And I'm not gonna count on composting to take care of that. And we did that as always, but we didn't get the hard freezes, the really bone chilling five degrees that sits there for a few days and kills a lot of stuff. And 
in the middle of the winter, if you turn something over, there'd be something alive under it. And you're like, oh, I don't know if this is good. Well, the answer was it wasn't. So the end of all of this mm -hmm. is that we had massive infestations of pests, all kinds of pests. We had rats, we had rabbits, we had mice. We even had birds picking up seeds as they were sprouting. We've seen that before, especially in California. The jays used to like to steal the peas there. But then you add in the insects. My Lord, <laughs> did we have insects this year. We had an infestation of June bugs. We had... Thrips started the whole thing. Thrips were early, early, early. And aphids? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we never get aphids here because it's too dry. But we got aphids this year. And boy, did we really get some aphids. We came back and some of the plants that we've never seen aphids on before, boy, they were just chock full of aphids. Yeah, covered with them. I'm still working on it. I've knocked them down a bunch, but even spraying them hard with water and hitting them with Safer's insecticidal soap, you know, when I, if I get, get to a box store this coming week, I'm gonna see if I can get some neem oil. Yeah, so if you've been following our channel for a little while, You'll have noticed that we did an experiment this spring using potatoes being grown in buckets. And that was a big clue for us because what we found was we found grubs, a lot of grubs. We probably had 10% uh, weight of potatoes in grubs. It was nasty. It was, it was gross, but it was a real eye opener and we didn't consider it to be a fail because the potatoes were delicious. But well, the only reason why they were delicious is because we picked them early because we were going to be leaving for the real part of the summer. So we picked them, uh, we harvested the potatoes early and we found grubs at the, base, at the base of all of them and down by the potatoes. It was really, really... They were definitively June bugs. And I didn't bother to try and figure out which variety of June bugs they are. Yeah, she's not really inter interested in turning them over and counting the hairs to figure out <laughs> which variety it is. Right, you have to check the hairs on their butts to tell whether they're a, which cycle they're on. There's at least one, two, and three year cycles for the June bugs. Right. Which will just drive you crazy. You know, commercial farmers time their crops based on when they're going to have an infestation. So they know which variety they have they just plan to plan around it. Right. But with all the different changes and stuff, it's screwing that up too. Because if you know that you have, say your big infestation is on only on the third year, well, then you plant something that's resistant to that June bug infestation on that third year. Well, we, we, would, we have a treatment. Right. We think we have a treatment. We think we have a treatment. I went through everything that I could find on the in my regular books, because I have a bunch of organic gardening books that are current, not the ancient ones. And other than solarizing, which we can't do because we're actually planting still. Solarizing is putting clear plastic over the bed and letting the sun heat it up. And it gets really hot. And around here, it definitely gets hot. Right, and that cooks the few, top few inches. Now, some people won't do it because they say it destroys all the microbes in the top few inches. Well, if you have soil of any depth, you've got reserve underneath that. And mostly what you're trying to do is kill the weed seeds and, the, and bugs and eggs and stuff like that that are in the top two or three inches. We still probably will try it again next spring. We do have Dipel, which is Bacillus thuringiensis. Yeah, now it's interesting because looking at the normal documentation for what will get rid of June bugs, BT wasn't suggested. But we found some other research that said BT will in fact kill the grubs. I pulled out a whole bunch of my amethyst green beans, my bush beans, because they had all fallen over dead. And when you pulled them, there was no root system left. All the fine hairs from the root systems were gone, and in some cases, there was almost nothing left all the way up to the bottom of the stem. When I started digging through, it was these darn white grubs again. Yeah, she was using a hand cultivator to kind of stir up the first two or three inches of soil. Right. Because that's really where those grubs should be at this time of year, and based on where the roots are being eaten, we know they were there. Beans are a relatively shallow rooted plant. They don't normally go down more than about four inches. Because of the fact that we're watering the way we are, they tend to stay shallow. Well, 
that was gross. I was going through cleaning out all the grubs again. And then I hit this one section where I had been, I had was, I was making sure, I was trying to make sure this was all it was. And I had been reading this one description that was saying that there's this other thing that can have these quarter inch long wormy things. So I'm watching for smaller stuff, not just big wiggly grubs. And I hit this one section and I turn up like 50 of these grubs, except they're only three eighths of an inch long. They're, they're, they're babies. They have hatched out relatively recently and I'm just sitting there mashing those things with my fingers, turning over the dirt, mashing them and turning over the dirt, but I know I'm not gonna get them all. And what we wanna do in that section that's now dead is we wanna plant snow peas because we've already planted new bush beans in some other beds. Most of them have come up. Some of them have already died from grubs. Some of them have been munched by birds or rodents, but generally speaking, it still looks, the one bed in particular still looks like we're gonna get a good harvest off of that. And we've treated all the beds now with Dipel, so hopefully that'll solve that problem. Yeah, Dipel is a specific encapsulated form of Bt. It's uh, desiccated and the bacteria rejuvenate when you get them wet. Right. And uh, we used, I think, a tablespoon per gallon. So we'll keep you updated on how this works. Right now, it looks like we'll need to repeat this application about every week. Mm -hmm. And until we don't see any more plants dying from the roots being eaten, we'll keep on applying at least once a week. Right. We're applying in a relatively high concentration based on the recommendations on the package. Now we're hand applying it from a sprayer and then Irene comes along and she waters it in with a hand wand. Right. Because we want to make sure that the BT gets down into the soil where it can thrive. Now you know what's really bizarre and it's ironic is that we've spent 12 years improving the soil in our garden. We've been adding more mulch, more compost, more stuff to it. We took the step of bringing in topsoil from outside of our property mm -hmm. because we wanted to eliminate the weed seeds that we were having, the amount of rock that we had, and the fact that most of our soil is actually kind of gravel, sand. Well, it's, uh, so it's so. mostly rock dust. And that means it has a lot of clay in it. So we've worked really hard improving the soil. And I would say probably our soil started getting good. Not, not three great. Three years ago. <laughs> good, but not great mm -hmm. three years ago. Mm -hmm. And according to some of the sources I've read, that's actually the source of the problem. <laughs> our soil is too good. Because we've made the top friable and fluffy and all that kind of stuff, that's why they're getting in there. So although we want to do that because obviously it's better for the plants and better nutrition and everything, it's also better nutrition for the darn bugs. Yeah, and the bugs seem to be having a field day with all that organic that we have in our, in our beds. Right. So we'll bring you along. We'll show you what's going on. I think we'll probably do a video about once a week on what we're seeing in the beds from this treatment. You know, there's a whole lot of things that could have been going on. We know this one is going on. Right. We may still have some mineral deficiencies in some of the beds, but I don't really think so. So, we'll bring you along and we'll tell you what happens. Right, yeah, I was actually looking at some of the plants today and we do have some mineral deficiencies, but that has nothing to do with the beans. That's just plain getting munched. <laughs> well, thanks for coming along, even on this unpleasant topic. <laughs> If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Comment. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. I got a lot of editing to do. You do? We talk too long. <laughs> too much to say. That scared the hell out of me. <laughs>